Hey, welcome to the video. In this one, I want to dive into one of the kind of underlying reasons why a lot of coaches don't succeed or why they hit sticking points in their business. And it's kind of like this downward spiral that I've experienced a few times in my life where you start maybe something that triggers it is you have like, sometimes it can be something surface level as like a lack of leads and then, you know, a lack of sales calls. And then that can impact kind of cash flow. And the reason I bring this up is because I've had this conversation with a few uh, new clients that have come on recently where they're good coaches, they're established coaches, they've had really successful months and even years in the past, but they've hit a dry spell in their business. And sometimes that can last three months, six months, even 12 months. And things just seem to be getting worse and worse and worse. And they're like, if I don't fix this, I'm fucked. Right now, I've had uh, periods like that in my own life, and you know, like last year, for example, I went through a dry spell for a few months. I did a video on it on my channel, but what happens is it's not just this physical thing of like, okay, I'm not getting enough leads or I'm not getting enough sales. The cash flow is low. You have all these other things that start circulating in your mind that come to the surface, like doubt, fear. You know, maybe this like kind of belief around um, you know not being good enough. These are all things that I've struggled with, by the way. This is why I bring this up and why I wanted to talk about this. For me, there were aspects of like not being a good partner. Specifically, you know, around the aspects of being a provider. There have been periods in my relationship where, you know, my my now wife was studying her master's. Uh, there was a really tricky point where we'd moved to the Netherlands, which was a really expensive country to live in. Um, she was doing her master's, so she wasn't working or making an income. And then COVID hit. And my business went to zero overnight. I went from making six figures to making zero within the space of like a week or two. I think like over, it might have been two weeks, like all my clients just like very quickly dropped off. Um, and I'd also recently kind of signed up to a very expensive mentorship, which I was still paying off. So there was just all of this, uh, all of these expenses and nothing coming in um, and all the pressure on me. And so there's periods where, you know, it's kind of make it feels like it's make or break, right? You need to really kind of step up and and provide, but that in itself can be really stressful. And then so you end up in this kind of like negative feedback loop where you have all these, you know, these negative beliefs, these negative thoughts, and then you start really doubting yourself. And sometimes you kind of at this period of like, oh man, like if if I don't do this, like I'm screwed, or like my family's screwed, or whatever it is. And so you need to, you know, pick yourself back up and start going back up through, you know, and basically reverse all these beliefs and these thoughts that you are having to get back it to a good level. Now, what I found useful over the years and where you can turn things around literally in an instant, right? This does not take weeks, months, or years to turn around. This can be uh, a process that you can go through and reverse instantly around kind of why you're feeling this way, because here's the thing, like your thoughts impact your feelings, which impacts your actions. Which impacts your thoughts, right? And you could potentially actually add in, I'm gonna add in another step there, which is results right so let's say you're not feeling good about yourself you're having some doubts you feel like maybe um you know you're not good enough you start having feelings of fear of anxiety of stress that's going to impact your actions and sometimes that's just inaction right so maybe you're just stuck in your head you're thinking through loads of different things maybe you're writing loads of different plans out for your business or what do i do next how do i make money how do i sign clients right you're not taking action you're just procrastinating right um, which obviously results in a lack of results. You're, you're not generating leads, you're not generating calls, you're not generating clients. Maybe even the clients you do have are being negatively impacted because you're showing up as a lesser version of you. And then that directly is going to impact those thoughts, right? This is negative downward spiral. And so that's that's how that's what happens, right? And so a lot of the time, 
we look at this and go for something more positive. We look at this and we want to change this, right? And we get so fixated on this of like, oh man, I just need to make more money. I just need to make more money. I just need to make more money. That, that feeds into this thought of lack, right? You focus on what you don't have because you're, you don't have much money and you become fearful. So, you know, that, that result, that lack of result feeds into a, you know, thoughts of lack, feelings of lack, and then your actions are impacted. So we need to turn this around. We need to focus on, first of all, thoughts, okay? So what has been good, right? And this is where I'm gonna, the main aspect of this video I wanna dive into is your why, because it starts, it starts with why, and that's gonna impact your feelings. Now, something that's helped me a lot over the years is understanding emotional regulation. So I'm gonna get onto that second. So if we say, first of all, we'll just talk about the thoughts and how we can reframe that. Secondly, we'll talk about the feelings and how we can reframe them because that's super important as well. Like it's all good changing your thoughts, but if you feel the same way, then you're not really gonna get anywhere. So your why, if you think about yourself as a coach, you have probably become a coach because you have been through some sort of journey yourself, right? Like maybe you were this person and you had some struggles that you had to overcome, right? And you, you went out on a journey, maybe you got some sort of guidance. You went through a transformation yourself and now you have like kind of come back and become a coach. These are so, <laughs> these are supposed to be people. This is really bad sketching. These are supposed to be people you're helping, right? You become a coach. That's usually the journey, right? And maybe you've had some qualifications along the way as part of the process, but you have kind of gone through this journey yourself of becoming a better person in whatever regard. Um, you know, a lot of my clients are in the personal development space, and mindset coaches who help people with anxiety and depression, um, you know, performance coaches, which help people kind of overcome procrastination and focus, uh, work with relationship and dating coaches, which is, you know, fairly self-explanatory, health and fitness coaches, which, you know, might be kind of more general around fitness, but I've also worked with people that help with specific health issues as well. Uh, and also business coaches, which helping people kind of overcome challenges in their business, right? They've all gone through this journey of, you know, struggling, getting help, and and a guide can be many things. For some people, that can just be books, that can be courses, um, you know, maybe even formal education, uh, mentorship. This is something I've invested very heavily into over the years. I think I've invested over, uh, well over 150k into mentorship over the years, in, in one way or another. Um, and then through these processes, you ex you experience change, right? Transformation, like how you uh, feel, how you think, and then obviously the results as well. And then you go back and you help other people with that. So one thing I like to do, if I ever feel doubt, and I have these thoughts, is think about the journey I've been through. Um, and chances are for you, it's not just been one thing. Like chances are you have been on this kind of like hero's journey multiple times for different aspects of your life and different periods of your life. Um, I know I have, like for me, when I was younger, I was struggling with depression and anxiety. Um, and especially around like when I was a teenager, uh, my dad passed away when I was 16. And so I went through this like really big shift. That was actually like the thing that really got me to take action because I was up until the point where he died, I was actually in a really bad place, like mentally and physically. Um, you know, I was struggling with depression. I had no purpose in life. I was failing in school. When he died, the thing that actually gave me clarity was like the very next day I went to the gym just because I, I didn't really know what to do with myself. And I just went to the gym just to kind of clear my head. And it did, it cleared my head and it made me feel good in the moment. And I thought, wow, if something like this can make me feel good when I've just been through this like horrible traumatic experience, then maybe I should carry on doing this, right? And I got really addicted to the gym at the time and I got really into it. I started reading men's health magazines. I started trying to like get every article I could. This is 16 years ago. So this is like where, you know, Facebook had only just come out. I was like mostly using MySpace. I wasn't on the internet that much at the time, but I was doing a lot to kind of 
dive deep into this and, and it gave me a direction in my life. I started to, um, you know, do qualifications. Um, I, I left school, went to college for a couple of years to, to study and then get into university, um, studied sports science, nutrition, got really deeply into that and then became a personal trainer, right? So my first few years of coaching was kind of in-person coaching people around their health and nutrition. I uh, started stud studying NLP and psychology and then I took my business online in 2000 and uh, well, I started in like kind of 2013, but I didn't really properly do, do it until 2015. That's when I took it off and, uh, and it went full time uh, end of 2015. But my point being is I went through this journey and then I started coaching other people to help them through that journey. So I started coaching people, especially young men who are struggling with depression, anxiety, uh, and then their physical kind of like that physical transformation as well, helping them get strong. So I was like a really skinny guy. Uh, I think up until the age of like 19 or 18, 19, I was like 60 kilos. Like I was really skinny. Uh, and then I kind of bulked up. I put on a lot of muscle. I got into sports and that helped me with my confidence. That helped me with women. That helped me with socializing. That helped me with all these different things. And so I kind of packaged that up into a coaching offer and help people with that. Then over the years uh, of developing that business, I grew up to six figures. I ended up working for my business mentor for a year. I learned a lot of really crucial skills around marketing and sales. And I started coaching people around marketing and sales. And I, I grew an agency around that. And that's kind of what I help people with now is marketing and sales and business. So I've been through several kind of transformations throughout my life where I've kind of acquired new skills, where I've developed things. And so anytime I get stuck, all right, going back to this, anytime I get stuck with these kind of you know, maybe it's like a lack of results. Think about a lack of actions, it's how I'm feeling, it's my thoughts. I start with how I think about myself. So I zoom out and I just think about the journey that I've been on. And I literally will sometimes write or draw this out as a journey. And then I will dive into my feelings, right? And one of the most powerful things that you can do if you're if you're feeling a certain way, like fear and anxiety is something I've dealt with a lot over my life. If you're feeling a certain way, then you can change that. But Here's the thing, you don't change it through force. If you, let's say for example, you're feeling anxious, rather than like trying to hype yourself up and make yourself feel good, like that can help in the moment, but it doesn't help long term, right? So one thing that I learned uh, maybe three, four years ago is this kind of process of emotional regulation. Um, and I was working with a coach who would take me through this process. And what I would do is I would close my eyes I would take a few deep breaths and I would just feel into my body and I'd feel like where I was tight or I was painful and emotions would arise. I'd start feeling maybe like, you know, a feeling in my gut where I was feeling anxiousness or in my chest where I was feeling anxiousness. Or maybe I would, if I was like really stressed, I'd feel it in my neck or in my, you know, my abdomen. And I'd, I'd feel into these different areas and rather than try and change it, I would just focus on it and feel it and actually express it and bring it to surface. And sometimes that would make me kind of like laugh hysterically or sometimes it would make me cry or sometimes it would make me feel a bit angry. And I just allow this to come up. And this is a really, really powerful process because especially as men, we do not express ourselves very much uh, and definitely not in a healthy way. And sometimes, you know, with fitness, that can be an outlet and you're like, okay, well, I'll go work out and I'll put all this aggression. You see these guys in the gym who are like, you know, really fucking aggressive and they're like punching the punch bag and they're lifting weights and they're just really angry. And, and for some people, they think of that as like the outlet, but it's not, right? Because you're not really you're not really tuning into the emotions and feeling it. You're just trying to push through it and get out, get it out of your system. And so for me, emotional regulation was a really powerful tool to process that. Okay, so I start thinking about my 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 thoughts differently. I kind of look at my thoughts for what they are. Like especially if you if you have thoughts around like oh man, I'm a failure or I'm a fuck up or things aren't working out or things are never going to work out, right? If, like, if you're in like quite a negative headspace, what you can do is just imagine yourself thinking these thoughts, right? And just imagine these thoughts as like clouds going through your mind and, that, and detach yourself from them. Like you are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are just processing and going through your brain, right? You have a lot of thoughts throughout the day. We just choose to become attached to certain thoughts. So you just have to like notice your thoughts. Be aware of your thoughts. Okay, I'm having this fear of like not being good enough. Okay, that's cool. I'm just having this thought, right? Same with any of these thoughts that are coming up that are negative and are not serving you. Then tune into your feelings, this emotional regulation, close your eyes, like express yourself, like get into that emotion. Actions, the next thing I would do is write this down. So get a journal and write down your thoughts, right? So running out of space here. 
So what you can do is just write down the thoughts that have been on your mind, how you're feeling, and get what's kind of like present and what what's you know what's coming up for you right now. Okay, that's number one. And then number two is if you want to change that, is we start looking at vision. Sometimes in business, when we've been through a dry spell and we've been through a period where things are hard, they're not enjoyable, um, you know, you, you need to tap back into that vision because excitement is a really powerful emotion, right? If you're excited to do something, that energy flows through you and other people feel that whether that's in your marketing, whether that's when you're having a conversation with someone, whether you're on a sales call or a coaching call. Excitement is really, really important. And so we want to come from a place of vision, which is like your own vision. So what do you want for yourself? And what do you want for, for others, right? Uh, and more so with the others, which is like, if we're looking at it as your business specifically, this is where mission comes in. All right, so I, I look as I look at vision as like your own vision for yourself and your life. How do you want to live your life? How do you want to run your business? Mission, what I look at is like more specifically, how are you serving others? Right. So what is the mission that you and your business is on? It's like, okay, I want to help a hundred I want to help a hundred men um I don't know transform their minds so they can conquer anxiety. I think this was something similar to my mission like seven years ago, eight years ago. Okay, and that mission is gonna give you a sense of purpose and drive in the morning, right? When you wake up and you don't feel like getting out of bed in the morning, it's because you're lacking purpose and you don't have a mission, right? I don't care like what diet you go on. I know people will talk about like energy because of like your habits, your routines, the things you eat. I personally have been through periods where my diet has been quote unquote perfect, I've been exercising regularly and I've still struggled to get out of bed in the morning, right? Whereas right now it's the middle of winter, it's cold. I wake up and I'm just full of purpose. I'm like good to go every morning, right? It's because I'm tapped into this mission. So vision, mission, last thing is values. This is super important. Now, I think a lot of people get values wrong because especially in society, we think of values as like family or happiness or just these like kind of generic traits, which really should be a value for everybody. Values, if you think about value in society, value comes down to kind of like money, right? If you think about the value that you bring to a society, it's, there's, there's some sort of tangible value there. So if you think about values in your own life, think about where you're spending money and time right? Where, you, where you're spending your currency, right? time, money, energy. So for me, for example, like a huge value of mine, if I look at where I'm spending my money, like health is a big one, right? So I've worked with a lot of health professionals over the years to um, overcome health issues that I've had with like chronic pain. I've invested a lot into chiropractic and that's helped me a lot. Um, coaching around IBS, which is an issue I've had, therapy with kind of depression and anxiety. Those are all things that I've had to process and work through over the last 15 years. I've invested a lot into my health and I continue to do so. Um, even just with like food and um, uh, supplements, right? There's, there's always things I'm investing in the gym, like stuff like that. Next is for me is like kind of travel and travel and I'd say adventure because it's not always like this grand thing of like traveling the world like me and my wife do travel a lot and that is something that we you know we spend a lot of money on because that's a high value of both of us but sometimes it's just adventure sometimes it's just doing things locally at the weekend that's fun another one for me lately has been more geared around kind of like family and more specifically home right like I'm settled now in Australia for a long time. I've just been moving place to place to place. So I've never really bought nice things for myself. Like I've never like owned a fridge before until a few months ago or owned like a nice sofa. So like everything in the apartment that we've got now is things that we've kind of like, we've spent more money on than we would have done in the past because it's something that's a higher value of ours as we're looking towards growing a family. So that's something that for me has become more of a value over time. And the other thing as well is like kind of education and business, like business is something I'm always spending a lot of money into, whether that's ads, whether that's, uh, you know, in the past, like team or uh, mentorship or courses or whatever it is, like that aspect of business is really important. 
uh, and education as well, right? And education can be small things. It can be books. Or it can even be, as I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be financial. Like for me, education can also be like watching YouTube videos. Um, and if you have a look at your YouTube search history, that's also going to tell you a lot about your values, right? Where are you spending your time learning? Because YouTube is generally like a platform where we're learning, unless you're just going there for entertainment. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you're somebody who values education because this is an educational video. So if you think about where are you spending your time learning, this is going to give you a picture of your values. And when you're clear on your vision, your mission, your values, you have this sense of purpose. You know, okay, I want to create this life for me. I know what my kind of day-to-day, -day, my perfect life is going to look like. I know what time I'm going to wake up. I know how I'm going to interact with people. I know what I'm going to do on a day-to-day -day basis. I know what mission I'm on. I know what my business is here to do. I'm here to serve this type of person and help them achieve this transformation, right? And I know what's important to me. Like when I do get money, I do know what I want to spend it on. When I have the time, I know what I'm going to spend my time on. When you are misaligned to your vision, mission, and values, that's going to mess everything up. Right. And as I say, this can all come through in an instant. And this is stuff to journal on, right? So we reframe our thoughts. So we, we kind of notice our thoughts. We reframe our feelings. We write down. So right now, the action might just be to journal, right? The action might not necessarily be to go out and hustle and grow business, but initially, journal, get clear on your vision, your mission, your values, write that stuff down. If you still want some help with the value stuff, if you go to, uh, if you just Google Dr. Uh, D. Martini values. He has like a quiz you can do for free. And that's going to give you some really valuable answers as well. Right? He's someone who I've learned a lot of this stuff from over the years. Um, you know, really great guy. Actually ran an event, uh, some ads for an event that he did last year in the US, which was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's going to be super valuable for you. If you do find this useful, let me know in the comments below. Um, what I would say is once you get clear on this stuff, then that's going to just drive into everything you do, right? So if you think about your marketing right now, maybe maybe you're just inconsistent with it. Uh, maybe you're not following up with people in the DMs. Maybe you're not having conversations that you should do. Maybe there's a lot of things that you know you could be doing, but you're not. And that's probably because you're feeling misaligned right now. So go through this process, get clear on your vision, your mission, your values, and then just write an action plan for yourself. Okay, I'm going to commit to doing this. Like maybe it's creating content every day. Maybe it's messaging people and following up with people. Maybe it's old leads that you need to get in contact with. Maybe it's past clients that you want to reach out to, right? Get clear on that. Maybe there's a decision that you need to make in your business right now. Maybe there's a mentor you want to hire. Maybe you want to go and start putting money into ads or content or whatever it is. There's things that you want to do and you're, you're being indecisive, right? And indecision is usually what happens when we're indecisive. Can't even spell right now. Let's just do this. Indecisive. It's going to feed back into that downward spiral because we're in this place of inertia, right? And there's a quote I heard years ago, it might have been by Tony Robbins, which is, you know, if we're not growing, we're dying. And I truly believe that. It's like we need to constantly adapt and evolve. I believe that's what we're here to do as a species. If you look at the history of the human race, we've consistently, you know, we're consistently adapting, innovating, evolving. That's how we are as a human species compared to other species. Like we're constantly doing things to evolve. And I think on a personal level, we all need to be doing that as well. And so that comes down to this um, process, right? We need to be kind of on this upward spiral. When you're on that, things just will flow. Things will not feel hard that used to feel hard, right? Creating content will become easier. All of the action steps that you feel like a massive boulders in your business right now will topple over, become much easier. And I'm talking about this from experience. Like I've been through a lot of down, you know, downward kind of uh, spirals in my journey over the last 10 years in business. Like I've been through some really dark patches. Um, sometimes I've been through periods of depression, like luckily not for a long time. Like, you know, I don't think I've experienced proper depression in a very long time, to be honest. Um, but anxiety and stress is something that I have experienced fairly frequently. And, you know, I think two years ago, I got really burnt out. And so I have been through these periods of like, feeling like I have no energy, feeling like everything is on top of me. This is going to help you a lot, right? Get clear on these three things, your vision, your mission, your values. And that all is going to feed into your why, right? The one last thing I'm going to finish off on is chasing your own truth, right? So your, your vision, your mission, and your values are yours. They're not mine, right? And 
know, it's one of the reasons why I got a Lamborghini in the thumbnail. For me, when I see like, especially young guys like flashing Lamborghinis or whatever it is, sports cars on, on Instagram, like that does not excite me at all. Like I don't, I don't want, a, the idea of having a sports car to me seems more stress than it's worth, right? Like not, not just about the money, but in terms of like the actual practicality of having a sports car for me is just doesn't make sense, right? For me, it's just something that you show off with. Same with like having a Rolex or whatever, right? Like that for me is not, doesn't give me a sense of purpose or drive. Like I don't care about this stuff. What is important for me is, as I talked about, is like health, travel, family is a huge thing, right? Like being able to provide for my wife, not just in terms of money, but in terms of like being present, being healthy, being powerful for her, and one day our kids. That for me is is much more important. Being a role model, um, and and money is important, right? This isn't not. This is about money, right? Let's be clear. If you're growing a business, you need money to one reinvest in the business, but two reinvest into your life so you can upgrade as a person, whether that's to invest in mentorship, coaching, education, health, travel, and you know, broadening your mind in that way, uh, or maybe just hobbies, like things you're interested in, things you enjoy. That's super, super important. And if you are into Lamborghinis and Rolexes, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that either. Like if that's something you genuinely want for yourself, then amazing, like go for it. But you need to do it for you, not because you're trying to show off for somebody else. Because I've been down that road before where you're just trying to do things for other people and trying to impress other people. And it's it's a one-way ticket to depression. It's a one-way ticket to constantly feeling like you're not good enough and that you don't measure up. So hopefully this was useful for you. I appreciate this is a little bit different to the usual content I put out, but I've had this conversation quite a few times over the last few weeks and it's stuff that I have been through um, and on a small scale I still go through every now and again I just I'm just have the tools because I've been through this so many times I have the tools now where I can just pull myself out of it very quickly um, and get back on track and so hopefully you find this useful and you can get back on that upward spiral so you can start getting some momentum in your life and your business and I'll see you in the next one